Mr. Deputy President, Mr. Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya, Cabinet Secretaries uh, present, uh, Principal Secretaries, Chairpersons and Chief Executives of our state uh, corporations, Chairpersons and Principals of our tertiary institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good afternoon. Um, today we witness the culmination of the annual performance contracting cycle and the commencement of analysis, reflection and improvement of future performance on the basis of evidence-based evaluation and feedback. Although the performance management framework is now in the 19th annual cycle, it is important to note that it emphatically and systematically incorporates, articulates, and enforces the values and principles of public service as laid down in Article 232 of the Constitution of Kenya and thereby enables the public service to become the foremost champion of the national values and principles of governance set out in Article 10 of our Constitution. We must do our part in full to ensure that this event and the processes and the process it represents underscores high professional standards, highlights efficient, effective and economic use of resources, demonstrates responsiveness, promptness, effectiveness, impartiality and equity in service provision, enhances transparency and accountability, and promotes meritocracy, inclusivity, and diversity. The imperative of ensuring that the provisions of the public service to citizens meets a specified constitutional threshold makes it inevitable for us to insist upon a more standardized, rational and evidence-based management regime. Last week, I engaged public servants about the constitutional stipulations regarding how government goes about the task of realizing citizens' expectations through the public service. In our constitutional dispensation, the public service is configured to become the optimal instrument to effectively mediate between the government's commitments and citizens' aspirations. In formulating the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, we went to great lengths to, uh, to conduct exhaustive consultations with Kenyans through, throughout the country. These consultations enabled us to formulate the policy and strategic basis of our manifesto as well as formal charters containing actionable commitments to be implemented through the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. <clears throat> we understand our governing mandate to be anchored on the deep understanding we have with the people of Kenya and that my performance contract as president is set out in the constitution and the agenda I sold with my team to the people of Kenya. My performance contract, therefore, sets out targets that the government must achieve in feeding every Kenyan, providing affordable housing throughout the country, achieving the universal health coverage, establishing necessary infrastructure for the expansive growth of the digital and creative economies, as well as creating millions of jobs through aggressive expansion of micro, small, and medium enterprises, including industrialization. In other words, I'm saying that while we have the privilege to serve in the public service, it's not a right. We 
are close to 700,000 people in the public service out of 50 plus million Kenyans. It is a privilege for us, a few of us, to serve in the public service. But that privilege comes with the responsibility on what do we do to create opportunity for the millions who do not have the privilege we have to serve in the public service. What is it that we are going to do so that they too can have an opportunity to work, to get a job, to do a business, and to go about their lives as the rest of us are doing. And that comes with huge responsibility.